You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, what is going on, everybody? This is a Dave Bullis podcast, and I am your host, Dave Bullis. Uh, but again, I think you already know that. But uh, before we get to today's show, I just want to mention uh, two really quick things. Um, one is, you know, with the passing of Burt Reynolds, uh, again, I always rather remember someone's life than, than mourn their death. Um, so I have a really cool story in the show notes uh, from Johnny Martin. Uh, Johnny Martin is a stunt guy. He's been on the show before. Um, he did the, uh, the the movie with Al Pacino. Uh, that's actually was released uh, earlier this year, uh, 2018. And um, he has a really, really cool story uh, involving Burt Reynolds that I shared on Instagram. And I've also put it in the show notes. So make sure you check that out. It's actually really, really cool. And um, again, I, I just want to say thank you to Johnny for letting me share that. And uh, Johnny's a great guy, and uh, he has a really great story about Burt Reynolds, um, again, in the show notes. And uh, the second really quick part is uh, I released the Shane Black uh, Screenwriting Masterclass video, just a collection of advice. Uh, I just saw Predator this past weekend, um, a lot different than the other Predators, um, so maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, depending on how you like your movies, or how you like your, your Predator movies. Um, but but um, either way, I put up this this new writing masterclass, uh, I think it's, it's just fantastic because, you know, I'm not speaking of my editing skills, <laughs> I'm speaking of Shane. Um, Shane is just fantastic at, at, at talking about writing, and uh, I hope this gets as much traction as my Quentin Tarantino video did, because um, that video, I think, it has about 130,000 views now, um, really did well, and I hope this does uh, equally as well, because I, I, I think that, you know, each one comes from a different place of, of screenwriting. So again, check that out. It's in the show notes. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get to today's uh, episode. My next guest it comes to us from Australia. Uh, as some of you know, he was actually on the podcast before. Uh, he's actually back now with his latest uh, short film called A Day in Life with a Personal Trainer. Uh, he actually is a comedian. He's a filmmaker, and he does all of this while he's blind. Um, really, really cool story uh, about my next guest, and uh, we, go, we go all into that. Um, and he, about just, you know, how he, he makes his movies, uh, and, you know, we're going to talk about building your own Netflix, because that's what he's done, he's, you know, just put up his own movies on his website, and he charges for them, and, uh, you know, that, that's how he, you know, continuously builds that library, and we talk about how he makes his movies, how he, how he does all that stuff, how he gets all the materials together, and uh, including his, his latest one, which, again, is out now. Without further ado, this is episode 224, with guest, Goff. Dave podcast. You know, I love the enthusiasm, by the way. I, I don't know <laughs> if that if that's just an Australian thing or if it's just you personally, Goff, but it's just I, I can feel the excitement in your voice. No, well, hey, look, uh, I I, uh, I love what I do, and uh, any chance to share what I do and, and my films with the uh, with the general public, I'm uh, I love it. So yeah, absolutely. Because most people are very disappointed to have to talk to me. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know, you know. By the way, before I forget, I I actually watched part of your stand up uh, act uh, on, on your your uh, website, and there's a line that had me dying laughing. And I and before I forget, I want to mention it. And uh, the, the the joke was, you went to the supermarket and you bought an egg and a tomato, and the, and the, and you go to the checkout line, and the and the check cashier says, "You're single, aren't you?" And you say, yeah, "How did you know? Cause you're ugly." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she it's uh, brutal but fair, you know. So that's uh, that's how I roll. It, it just it, it was uh, really great timing when you told the joke. I, I I actually was like that 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 was genius. That that's really good. No, no, it, uh, th th there was an Australian comedian uh, who was a good friend of mine called Lucky Grills. Uh, he's an older old school comedian, and he actually wrote that joke for me. He uh, he. Uh, so I've got a credit where credit's due. I've got to thank Lucky for that one. He was uh, he's passed away now, unfortunately, Lucky, but. Uh, in, people in Australia that listen to your podcast, they know exactly who I'm. He was a big name back in oh, the eighties in Australia, and I he lived close by, and so yeah, he uh, I when I started doing stand up, I uh, 
I, had, uh, I was lucky enough to have him uh, as a bit of a mentor. So, yeah, he was really cool. So he uh, he wrote that, that joke for me. So I've got to credit where credit's due. You know, I'll have to link to him in the show notes. I, I actually am not familiar with his work. Well, uh, yeah, he's he's an old school comic. So uh, I'm just trying to think of an American, I, I guess, kind of like a Bob Hope kind of style. It's, you know, so that, that sort of a style of comedian was lucky. But, yeah, he, uh, not, really, really nice fella. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll make sure to link that in the show notes, by the way. And uh, that way, because, I, again, I, I, I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't heard of him until now, but uh, I'll make sure. No, I... mate, uh, only, only other Australians would have heard of him. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, all good. See, you should have guilt tripped me about that and been like, you haven't heard of him? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, well, in all fairness, I don't think Lucky has even heard of himself. So you know, you're not, you're not that. Uh, it's, it's all good. <laughs> I could have been like, God damn! I'm like, I'm oh, geez, yeah, Goff, G- really like really laying it into me. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll, I'll look him up. But no, I'm, I'm glad you like the gag. It's a good joke. But yeah, and, and you know, I, I was looking at your site again, and uh, I know you you just released, uh, you know, one of your one of your latest short films. Uh, which is you know a daily life for a personal trainer, uh, you 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 always seem to be up to something, uh, Goff, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I you got you got to stay busy, man. You, or otherwise, you just kind of you start to do a little less and then a little less and then a little less, and then finally you're like, hey, what the hell happened? <laughs> Absolutely, no. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I, I like I said earlier, I love doing what I do. So the more films I get to punch out, the happier I am. So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to do what I do. So yeah, it's cool. So so let's uh, you know talk about your process a little bit, Goff. You know how do you you know like what is a daily you know uh, what is your you know a daily routine or maybe a, a day in the life of Goff look like? Uh, well, uh, that's a that's a very good question. I uh, <laughs> uh, that well yeah I I, I suppose uh, in regards to making the films, it's. Uh, it's just what needs to be done that day. So, you know, if it's uh, if it's a time to cast the next film, then it's all about annoying all the talent agents out there until they send me people to for auditions. Or if it's about location scouting, it's about trying to find the uh, the right... So, I mean, in the last film we did, uh, some of those locations were a little bit tricky to, to get my hands on. So it took a little bit of time to get those locations sorted out. But... Uh, yeah, that that's uh, it's just about whatever needs to be done that day, really. You know, it's uh, I'm lucky that uh, you know my product, Beer Nuts Productions, is my full time gig, so uh, I'm very lucky in that regard. So, do you, I mean, do you have like a set routine? Like, do you wake up at a certain time every day and just start writing, and or or, or do anything else to to sort of make sure that you're always sort of you know banging out a short film at a specific time or you know a specific number to, for a specific date. Well, it, it's more about uh, budget. When I have the budget to make the film, I make the film. But uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it, in regards to that. But, you yeah, know, I, I am uh, annoyingly anal. So, yes, I do get up at the same time every morning. I like to train so I because uh, it, it sort of makes my brain work better to do some exercise. So uh, the first thing I do when I get up is do some kind of physical activity, and that seems to spark my brain into action. And then it's, uh, yeah, just getting on with it. Uh, I, I In regards to writing... Uh, I find that I can't force it. It needs to be something that comes to me. So if I've got, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sketch down some ideas or whatever, but when it comes to the writing process, it's about when when something comes to me, I, I need to get it out of my system. I write it down then. But if I was to sit at the computer and go, right, today I'm going to write for half an hour, it just doesn't work like that for me. And because my stuff is comedy-based, it just wouldn't be funny because you can't force good comedy it's just not something that you can force out of yourself so you know the writing process just happens when it happens but uh yes so uh that's how i do the writing part so you you get up to train so it's kind of like i'm starting to see now where you got the idea for your latest movie by the way (laughs) (laughs) the wheels are turning goff well well actually you you might find you've seen the film but uh a lot of people find this hard to believe that the lead character in that is actually based on a woman who works at my gym. She's a little bit crazy. And I, after knowing her for a couple of months, I was like, I need to write your personality down. So that's how the film got started. I sort of wrote a little character bio of this particular lady or tra- trainer. And she, uh, 
uh, then I was like, well, how am I going to turn this into a film? So I thought, well, the best way to do it is more like a day in the life of. So that's what I did. So, uh, yeah, but that uh, Jackie Cooper is actually based on an actual real person, if you can believe that. Yeah, you know, uh, way back when, uh, Goff, I actually used to be in, in pretty decent shape. And uh, I, I actually used to work at a GNC. And uh, I actually used to have, like, like really, we were right across the street from a gym. And I used to have people come over all the time, and they were just, like, some of them were, were pretty, like, you know, nice people. And then you'd have this weird group that was just, like, and, and the thing was, they were in all different age groups and, and, and stuff. But they were, like, they'd either come before to, to the GNC and then go to the gym or vice versa. But they all had these weird personality quirks. Um, you know what I mean? And, and some of those guys were like, you know, unabashedly like, you know, talking about, you know, injecting themselves with stuff. Uh, others were like, you know, you know, just just like always on the go. Like, they're, you know, you're like, man, you, you could calm down for a second. I, th- I don't think your heart can take much more of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, like I say, the uh, Jackie Cooper, the, the lady that I haven't actually told her, I haven't had the courage to tell this woman that I based a, an entire film over, around her personality because... I think she'd kill me, but uh, actually a friend of mine watched the film, and they're like, I don't know, I think she'd take it as a compliment, I think she'd uh, she'd like that, but, because, uh, uh, yeah, she she was an out there kind of a lady, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, so when people watch the film, they'll be like, wow, there's actually a person like that, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Do you think maybe, what, what if you just took, like, a, a DVD, right, and just kind of, like, maybe left it for at the front desk, and, and then she can watch it and kind of be like, who the hell made this? Yeah, well, well uh, uh, my, a friend of mine at the gym actually suggested a very similar thing. They're like, uh, maybe you should just like send a like a, 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 an anonymous email or something like that, saying, oh, "Check out this film. I think you might find it of interest." You know, so uh, yeah, just uh, subtly guide her towards the uh, the website. Yeah, and you and you should name it after that the uh, the stalker in the, in the actual movie, <laughs> and it kind of plays out like it's like it's almost like the inception of personal trainers now. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it could could uh, I could start doing a little bit of a sequel to it, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, you know what I mean, and it's kind of like another a layer within a layer, and she'll, she'll be like, "My God, it's like it's art imitating life." And and then it, and then you'll you'll know if she's gonna kill you or not. So that way, <laughs> if she comes in and she's laughing at it, you're like, "Hey, it was all me. It was me, Goff." And if she hates it, you're like, "I don't know who the hell made that movie." But <laughs> yes, yeah, no, you might be onto something. It's it's not such a bad idea. Oh, thank you, thank you. I have a good idea from time to time. But uh, <laughs> but uh, hey, hey Gov, let me ask you a question. In in, in Australia, in gym etiquette, is it is it proper if you wanted to slam the weights? As in, well, it, it, the gym that I attend, I mean, the staff aren't uh, what we would call, I don't know, fastidious, I suppose. So, uh, uh, yeah, you kind of, if you're doing bench press or, or with dumbbells or whatever, and uh, they're a bit heavy, you just sort of throw them down. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I, I, I do because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know that you're supposed to. Yeah, so I suppose I'm, uh, I'm not very good in that regard, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> Because uh, in America, there's two types of gyms uh, where that that's kind of like allowed, and the other gym where the other gyms where it's kind of like you know uh, it's very very you know it's considered to be bad for not only bad etiquette but you also can get thrown out for stuff like that. Like if you're lifting weights and you, you kind of like slam it if you're doing like a deadlift and you slam it down, uh, or if you you know you you maybe drop a weight by accident or something, it's like they they get real anal about that stuff. Yeah, well, I, I don't think you're supposed to. Like, technically, I don't think you're supposed to. But my counter argument is: is the weights are bloody heavy, so you know they if, they if they need to go down, they need to go down. So you know that that's my counter argument to it. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I've always uh, I agree with you completely because I, I you know you have to wonder like, but well, what if they you know what happens? You know, stuff happens. You can't really control everything, so. Um, but yeah, it's just a very odd etiquette in some of the gyms in, in America here. So, uh, but, but yeah, so I, I, I concur though. So, you know, as we kind of talk about, you know, you know, making this, this, this short film, you know, you, you kind of mentioned a budget and, and finding locations. So when you wanted to sort of, you sort of, you know, you, you mentioned that you were at this gym and there's a personal trainer and you started getting ideas about, you know, Hey, this is a character and I could actually make her into, you know, a character in a, in a movie. So at what point did you kind of start putting together a budget 
and then start looking for locations. Yeah, so uh, once the script is written, I sort of then go through the script and I'm like, okay, well, what what am I going to need? How much is this going to cost me? And so if uh, there's any little script adjustments I need to do, I do that. And then, yeah, it's uh, it's basically how much money do I have? Uh, Okay, well, I've got this amount of money. Okay, so how am I going to be able to make this film a reality? So then I go about, you know, organizing my locations. And and for this one, it was a bit tricky. the the gym at, finding a gym was was actually one of the easier locations, but the cafe was a little bit tricky. Finding a public swimming pool that was happy to let us film there was a little bit tricky. So it's just about uh, trying to find uh, the most cooperative folks out there because again we don't have a lot of money, so I can't be uh, you know paying people and whatnot to use their locations, which is what usually happens. So I just uh, you know rely on the uh, the good graces of uh, of the general public to let me. Uh, film where we need to film but uh yeah and then uh, and then it's about getting the cast together and and any external crew that i, I needed a few extra crew members on this because it was a reasonably uh, hectic uh, shoot and so uh yeah just uh, getting it all together the pre-production takes uh, takes a long while so yeah so, like, what were some of the challenges of finding? I mean, you're just talking about locations, and I mean, again, I always, I always say that that locations are kind of like the biggest hurdle for a lot of filmmakers, um, for for a number of reasons. But you know, so, so when you were going around and looking for locations, like, what what were some of the obstacles that you were kind of facing when when you're trying to like you know location scout and get these get these locations locked down? Well, well, mainly finding people who were who were cooperative enough to let us film there. So, you know, getting a cafe that was happy for us to uh, come in with all of our gear and and you know set up and film and sort of impact on their their life, you know. So, uh, I mean, as you saw at the in the end credits, we give people an advertising credit as a way of thanking them for letting us use their their business space. But uh, yeah, it's it's more about finding people who are cooperative and obviously. It, it's very important to me when I make a film that a location could be anywhere so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, alienate the film so that people aren't sitting there going, oh, well, that's obviously set in such a place. I want people, I could be anywhere USA kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's important that I don't have something that's really specific. It could be, it's got to be a real general sort of feel to it so that, it's relatable to people who are watching. That's really important to me as well when I'm looking for a location. So when you go in and you kind of like, you know, say, hey, I'm Garth and, and you know, they and you start talking to them. Um, what are some of the questions that kind of come up? I mean, do do, do like, because I, I always I, I have a list, too, of questions that always seem to come up, which are, are you going to use any blood or gore? And is there nudity? <laughs> That's the big two I get from everybody. Um, those two questions. Uh, and so I wanted to ask you, you know, Goff, what, 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 do you ever have like a, uh, the same questions from all these locations kind of come up? Does, does that happen to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah very similar. I, I, I work on the, the theory that the less information I give, the less chance there is of problems. So I'm deliberately vague. So just because, I mean, you just don't want uh, any unnecessary hassles. And I know I'm not doing... I mean, you've seen the film. We're not doing anything untoward. I know that. So, you know, I, I know that I'm not tricking them or anything of that nature. So it's just about, can we film here? Uh, what are you doing? It's a comedy mockumentary based on, you know, the fitness industry. Oh, okay, no worries. That sounds all right. Okay, great. Thanks. Off we go. You know, I, I deliberately sort of... Uh, give as little information as possible because it just, uh, it, it, uh, you know, saves, uh, saves problems in the future, if that makes sense. No, it, it does. It, make, it makes perfect sense. Uh, I mean, so do, do any of these locations like ask you for insurance or anything? Oh, no. Well, yeah, we, we've got, obviously, we have to have our own insurance. And that's, uh, I mean, the public swimming pool, we have to sign a waiver and all that kind of stuff, which is totally fine. So I don't, uh, yeah, I, I, I expect... Uh, that to take place that's totally fine and yeah we, we've we're fully insured so if uh, someone was to fall over and break an arm that's uh, you know we're, we're totally covered so yeah because that's obviously yeah that's absolutely 100 percent important because otherwise you could find yourself in bankruptcy court and being sued very very quickly so you got to make sure that you cover your ass when you do something like this 
Yeah, I, again, I I wanted to. I always want to inquire because again, because you're in Australia, and I want to. I always wanted to see if you know maybe the Australians were you know oh you know don't worry about it you know something because you know in America you have to have a uh, you have to go through like all this legal process where you sign something away like your you know your life away for, for all these documents and it's like here you go sign these ten thousand pages and uh, you should you should be set for the first day. And, uh, yeah, well, well, like, like I say, you know, I know that I'm not doing anything untoward, so I'm completely comfortable with everything. And, and uh, we got the insurances as backup if someone was to get injured or whatever on set. We got that as as our, our backup. But you know, I know that we're not doing anything wrong, so I, I, yeah, I'm completely comfortable. When we go into film at a location, there's I'm never nervous or anything of that nature. You know, we just get in there, film what we need, and, and get out. And most look. At the end, once people realise what we're doing and what we're about, they're pretty cool, you know. I mean, after after we film, I mean, the, the cafe was a good example that we had needed a cafe for this last film that we did and they were a little bit sceptical when we were going in, but then when we finished, they were really cool. They actually, because we needed some food preparation as well uh, from them and, uh, you know, I go to pay the bill and everything, they're like, nah, don't worry about it. Everything was cool because they realised in the end that, Oh no, they're they're not interfering with our business, and everything is uh, is sweet. So yeah, it's uh, pe- people. Once people understand what you're about, they're usually pretty cool. Yeah, I I, I concur, and, and and I'm glad that you know that that's that's something that you know it's kind of like a universal truth. You know, it's kind of that kind of the same worldwide. If uh, you know, if you if you kind of um, if, if they see you're in there with good intentions and not a complete jerk or you know jerk or whatever, uh, they're kind of like, all right, you know, it's fine. And, and I've been on sets, by the way, where people have been jerks, and you know, suddenly that the place isn't so cool with everything anymore, and they're like, hey, when you when, when are you idiots getting out of here? And you're like, uh, you're like, not soon enough, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 that, that's the, that's the thing, Dave. You're absolutely right. I mean. You know, at the end of the day, Beer Nuts Productions is about entertaining people and mainly making people laugh because most of the stuff we do is comedy-based. So I'm all about, you know, entertaining folks. And, and so, you know, it, it's in my best interest to be, you know, polite and professional with people so that if I need to use a cafe again, I can go back there. You know, it, it, uh, it would be counterproductive for me to be a jackass. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And plus, you're a nice guy anyway, uh, Goff. You're, 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 you know, you're, you're this very funny, friendly guy. So, you know, uh, that's, a, that, that's a really good thing. It really helps to get you indoors and stuff like that. So, so you know, as you kind of have everything locked down, Goff, you know, how long did it take you to actually make this short film? So, yeah, the, the pre-production takes about 8 to 12 weeks. And then uh, we actually, we only, because I've got a limited budget, we actually filmed that entire film in a day. We started at about... 6 a.m. and finished at about oh, 9.30 at night. And uh, so we actually filmed that entire film in a day. And then the uh, editing was also a day. And then uh, it goes straight up on the website. So it's a quick turnaround because it has to be because we need it up on the website for people to uh, download and enjoy as quickly as possible. So it's uh, it's a little bit different, my production process in that regard, as uh, the organization and the pre-production takes a long while. And then, yeah, within uh, a week, it's uh, shoot, edit, and up. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit different in that regard. And, and just for everyone who, who doesn't know, um, you're, you're legally blind. Um, and, That's and, correct, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the reason I bring it up is because, I, I you know, uh, I, I think it's just amazing, you know, uh, that not only have, have you, you know, not let anything hold you back, but also, you know, you're putting together all these things, and, you, and you know, uh, I, I don't think sometimes – you know, um, you know, maybe people don't really understand just, you know, how, you know, for those who haven't made a movie, you know, how much goes into this, you know, in, in terms of all the different processes and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, I mean and but you've just, you know, you know, not only churned along, Goff, but I mean, you, you've you just been, you know, out there just, you know, banging down doors and not letting anything stop you. So, so for that, for those of you listening who don't know, you know, Goff is, is legally blind and, uh, you know, he's just been, you know, making sure that nothing stands in his way. Yeah, well, a- absolutely. And I mean, it comes down to, for me as well, because of my disability, it means that uh, I have to have a crew around me that I can trust, you know, so that people, uh, you know, I can't have a cameraman going rogue and just filming what he wants to film and that kind of stuff. So I need to make sure that I've got a, a group of people around me that I can trust. And-, and it's also on me to communicate my ideas really, really clearly with everybody so that they 
all know exactly what I'm after because, uh, yeah, it does make things a little bit tricky, not being able to uh, see very well. It, uh, it does make things a little bit difficult at times, but, you know, there's always a way to get around things. Yeah, very, very true. And, uh, you know, you know, once you kind of, you know, put all this together, you know, uh, you have a site which is, uh, you know, full of all, you know, full of all, uh, of all the other short films that you've made and, uh, you know, the, and all the interviews that you've done, um, which, again, I, I you know, I, I think that's great because you, you kind of, uh, you know, you not only have you put your flagpole in your, in your own sort of you know, spot on the Internet, um, but you've kind of made, made your own Netflix in a way, go, uh, go, go, go. <laughs> I, I want to call you I, every time I see your name, I want to say Vince, like Vincent Van Gogh. I, I mentioned this to you last time, but, but it's, <laughs> but it, but, it, but it, yeah, you've kind of made your own, uh, your net, your own Netflix. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And that was a deliberate choice to do that. So yeah. So if people go to beernutsproductions.com, we've got 15 films up there. We've got eight audio downloads like comedy sketches and also five books. And so, yeah, we are kind of like our own little independent Netflix. Uh, and yeah, that, that was done very purposely, you know, so that, uh, yeah, cause I, I, I think that's uh, a, a good business model basically, you know, so that people can download the films whenever they want to, and they can enjoy them whenever they feel like in the comfort of their, their own home, you know, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and you know the it's kind of like your own Netflix, and it's good. You know, you're creating all this you know original content, and it's all right there, um, you know, for 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 people to uh, to download. And I mean, it's and again, I, I think that's kind of where we're headed to. So I, what I'm trying to say is, is golf. I think you're you're ahead of the game in terms of a lot of the filmmakers because I think that's where we're going. Where you know maybe you don't want to have a film out in the theater or maybe you know and i mean and I, and again this is just me you know uh theorizing on things but but it, it looks like that's where we're going well it's more as well i mean uh when i first started out people were like other actors and people in the industry were all like oh so you're going to put this in a festival and you're going to do this and you're going to like well no i want people to from all over the world to be able to access my entertainment so i'm not just going to stick it in a little festival in a country town where only a few people are going to be able to see it i want everybody to enjoy my work so that's that was one of the reasons why i do what i do for for that exact reason so you know i i uh, yeah I, i'm not big on you know festivals and all that kind of stuff i mean i like going to them and enjoying them as a uh, as just a regular punter but just uh, putting my work out there, that's not how I like to do it. I want everybody, so whether they live in Iceland or, or uh, you know, Tampa Bay, Florida, it doesn't matter. They can uh, they can all access my work and enjoy it equally. I, I like how you name-dropped uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. That's, <laughs> that's, an, that's an interesting uh, – uh, uh, it's an interesting uh, choice of locations, but uh, – well, I've, 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 uh, I've been to Tampa. That's uh, I don't know why it came into my brain, but uh, I spent quite a bit of time down in uh, Florida. When back when I was a uh, doing stand up comedy, like we discussed earlier, I toured all over Florida. So there was uh, a couple of uh, booking agents there. I did three months uh, both coasts of Florida. It was really cool, actually. I kind of like Florida. Uh, another comedian, just really quick. Uh, another comedian said to me on my first day there. The other guy I was touring with, he's like. Uh, an American guy, he's like, have you been to Florida before? I said, no. He said, uh, well, don't don't let it fool you. He said, you might be in the tourist capital of America, but you're still in the deep south. And, uh, uh, yeah, he was uh, he was absolutely right. It's an interesting mix, Florida. I kind of liked it. It was, a, it was a fun place to be. So <laughs> when, when, you, when, when he said the deep south, um, that I can take that a number of different ways. <laughs> so, uh, if you do, you want to elaborate, or do you want to go on to the next question? <laughs> well, I think he was meaning uh, sort of uh, Alabama, kind of. Uh, that, that's where he was going with that sort of a comment, and and he, he he is right. It's an eclectic group of people that call Florida home. So that's why I kind of liked it because uh, you know. Uh, I, I like places that are a little bit quirky and a little bit different, and that's uh, that's sort of how I found Florida to be. You know, uh, I, I had a friend of mine. I, I'll tell you my 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 uh, what I call my Florida story, even though I haven't I, I didn't go on this trip. Um, I had a friend of mine who had a beach house down in Florida, and um, this this guy's crazy, just absolutely crazy. He 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 kind of looks like the comedian Jim Brewer. Uh, if you remember Jim Brewer <laughs> from Half Baked, and um, 
he he talks like he talks like very slowly because he's like, oh man, like he talks like that. Like he always has like it always looks like he's something is like you know occupying his brain, and um, so he comes back from his trip to Florida, and he, he tells me that he was out all night drinking, and he woke up the next day and he he just. It was around noon, and, he, and the first idea he had was to go for a piece of pizza. So he goes out of this this pizza parlor, and he passes out as he's waiting in line for 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 to grab a slice, and he w- <laughs> and he wakes up, and he said, "There's two midget paramedics that are helping him out." And I said, "What were they? Just small?" He goes, "No, they were honest to god dwarves." <laughs> And they were carrying him. And I said, what the hell are you on? I go, why would they – if there was two little people, why on earth would they put them both together to carry people out? Like, I said, I said, why would they do that? They wouldn't, they wouldn't stack them in the same one. They, they, and, and he swore that they put him on this little miniature gurney like me for other dwarves and carried him out. And I said, this didn't happen. This had to be your hallucination. He goes, no, I woke up in the hospital. So these two midget uh, paramedics put him on a little dwarf made from board and carried him. And I said, was the ambulance also made for dwarves? And he looks at me like I'm stupid or crazy. And goes, no, why would it be? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm the one that's talking crazy here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just uh, that was my Florida story. And uh, he, to this day, he swears that that that, that happened. But, uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but just, you know, sorry, sorry to tell that little interlude, uh, uh, Goff. But, um, but, you know, no, no, I, hey, hey, look, midgets are always fun, you know, it's always, <laughs> it's always a good subject matter. That's, but uh, it was uh, to Dave Attell, one of my all-time favourite comedians. He was on Conan O'Brien, and his entire set was all about midgets. It was very funny. He, he says, uh, he, he, he said, there'll never ever be a midget weatherman because it'll be like a flood is coming. Yeah, to you, we're all fine. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, I I love David Tell because uh, he used to do that um that show um uh what was it um not up all night Insom- insomniac. insomniac yeah insomniac yeah. uh because up all night was Rhonda Shore uh, Rhonda um uh Rhonda yeah uh oh, what the hell's her last name she was on the show for the podcast for God's sakes um <laughs> but uh, uh she was um uh yeah, but yeah she did up all night and then uh and then David Tell did insomniac that's right okay uh, 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 I like Dave Tell. He's my sort of style because I like that brashness. You know that. Here's my joke. If you don't like it, that's your problem. I'm just gonna just bang. You know, he's just in your face. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say, and that's it. You know, I just love that New York City brash kind of a a, a feel. I, I I dig it a lot. You know, I I like that kind of attitude. You know, this is this is what I got to say. If you like it, great. If you don't, I don't care because I'm going to say it anyway. I just uh, I dig that sort of attitude that he's got. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think you kind of need that in comedy now. I think. I think, yes. you, I think you need it all the time in comedy. You kind of have to. You have to kind of protect the censorship at all, all costs. Like no censorship and and just well, you know. Well, see, see, that's the good thing about what I do personally is that I don't have a network or whatever saying to me. You can't do this or you can't say that. I mean, you saw the the latest film, A Day in the Life of a Personal Trainer, and there's a few scenes in that where the censor would go, yeah, you can't really do that, uh, so we're not going to let you do that. But I I don't have that problem. I can say what I want to say and do what I want to do. So, I'm again, I'm very lucky in that regard. So I've got nobody, you know, on my back about any of the jokes or whatever. I can just uh, let it all hang out, you know, which uh, gives me total freedom, which is really, really cool. Yeah, they're going to be like, hey, uh, hey, Goff, that scene with the Coke, uh, I think we're going to need to get rid of that uh, right off the bat. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, the sex in the male change rooms, we won't be doing that scene either. So, yeah, the uh, the 25-minute film would be cut down to about 12 minutes if the censors had their way. But uh, I don't have that problem. I'm very lucky in that regard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very, very true. You'd be like, well, this is now, this 25 minute film has now become a commercial. Yes. <laughs> it's like a 30 yeah. second spot now. <laughs> that's, yes. Well, see, that's, uh, I avoid that problem because that would be a problem for me. Yeah. Every, everything I would make would turn into a 30 second ad. <laughs> and people would be like, what What was that an ad for? Uh, but uh, it's like, it's, like, 
You'd be like, well, I had to cry to cram my 25 minute movie to 30 seconds. It's kind of, you know, it'd be like, good, good evening. And then the credits roll, you know, that's all I'd get. So, you know, <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm very lucky that I can, uh, I, I've got to see that. That's the great thing about like going back to what you were saying earlier about me being my sort of own independent Netflix, you know, Beer Nuts Productions, we can do what we want, when we want and how we want, you know, we got to, which, which is very, very lucky for, for us that we can do that. So yeah, it's a, it's a really cool thing. Yeah, it, it's uh, it is a really cool thing. And again, that's why I'm always, always about freedom of speech and, and freedom of, of expression and art and stuff like that. Um, because you don't want anyone telling you, you know, what's approved and what's not approved. That, that's, absolutely, that, 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 that's dangerous level stuff there. Uh, absolutely. And that's with all art, you know, whether it be a stand-up comedian, whether it be a band. I mean, you know, like you, you think back to when like NWA came out in the 80s and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you, you, it doesn't matter if it's music, if it's painting. I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what sort of art form it is. I mean, I, I agree with you 100%. You've you got to let the artist, whether it be a filmmaker, a singer, a comedian, a painter, you got to let them have their creative you can't stifle their creativity by telling them what they can and cannot do you know you got to let them be them because that's what makes great art great yeah exactly it has, it has an edge to it you know and maybe it, it's you know not not only is the artist talking about the the society right now but where it's going you know it's in the comment social commentaries and again i think it's more important than ever now because everyone is you know uh i don't know how how the the zeitgeist is right now in australia uh, golf, but you know, I'm sure you know you see how everything is in America right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, I was chatting to a friend of mine in the states, and they were, they were all about uh, uh, in America. They had the net, what is it, the net neutrality was uh, was a big issue. You know, a couple of months back, about uh, uh, oh, you'd probably be able to describe it better than me. Hopefully, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, the government uh, coming in and saying certain websites need to be certain speeds and all that kind of stuff. Does that, am I talking out of my ass or do, do you know what I'm talking about? Not a clue. No, no, I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no. um, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's it, right. Basically where certain websites, you know, um, would have to pay to be throttled or, or, or not to be throttled. You know what I mean? Like certain websites. So basically it's like almost like a big pay for play and then certain websites that aren't approved would get throttled with with uh, with uh, d low speeds and and you know what I mean. It's just like all that type of stuff. And then you know you're gonna pay more for your internet per month anyway. And now it's got, it's all these things that are kind of rolled into that net neutrality act. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's just another way of stifling people. And, and you know, you know, and, and that's like we were saying. That's not what I'm about. And it, it sounds like it's not what you're about. You know, you gotta you you, you gotta have total freedom with with your art and with your creativity and. and you know, putting uh, putting blockers on, you know, being uh, not having the internet speeds that your website needs and all that kind of stuff, so that you go down the Google listings and all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's very uncool. Yeah, it it, it, really, it really is, and uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping that eventually it'll uh, it'll get repealed. Because um, I mean, I I don't even who who the hell knows. But anyways. Um, uh, you know, j just to sort of, you know, as we can sort of continue to talk about, you know, art and stuff like that, I wanted to ask, you know, Goff, you know, uh, what's next for you? Like, what what, what, what project do you have next? Because I'm kind of, I have an idea I want to pitch to you for what you should do next. Oh, well, well I'm all up for ideas. But at, at the moment, I'm kind of, I get myself in a sort of a groove. So I've done a whole bunch of mockumentaries. So I did a mockumentary about the environment. I did a mockumentary about the so-called war on drugs or the media's war on drugs. I've done a mockumentary about the porn industry and I've done, the last one was all about the fitness industry, a, a mockumentary all taking the piss out of the personal trainers and the fitness industry. So I think I'm going to do another mockumentary. I just, uh, I got a few little scripts and ideas going at the minute. So, uh, yeah, but I, I'm all up for, all up for ideas. So pitch away, Dave. So the, there was an article I was reading about where these flat earthers, do you know, you know what the flat earthers are? Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. They uh, just accused Australia of being a fake country. <laughs> and, and they said that Australia really doesn't exist and that, you know, there's all paid actors. So, so according to them, uh, uh, Goff, you don't really exist. Okay, fair so, enough. <laughs> so, so, Does this mean I'm a figment of your imagination, Dave? Uh, but no, basically it means, um, according to them, you're a paid actor. 
Okay. Well, well, if I am, if I'm a paid actor, then I deserve a rise, I reckon, because I'm not getting the the wage that I require. So I need a I need a pay rise. <laughs> so I thought it'd be funny if you made a, a a mockumentary about how they're right and Australia is a fake country <laughs> and you're all actors and you're just like like and it's it's like you know you and somebody else and you have to like kind of do this like maybe maybe like some other accent. Until the cameras start rolling, and then all of a sudden the Australian comes back out. You're like, here we go. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm a little bit put out that uh, Australia's the fake country. What does that make New Zealand in that case? I would have thought they would have gone for New Zealand being the fake country because they, uh, you know, they're, they're a bunch of crazy people over over the ditch there. So uh, I'm a bit a bit upset that they, you know, decided to pick on us instead of the New Zealanders. Uh, I, I think it's because if you look at a map, Australia would be like a, 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 you know, one of their maps. If you look at where Australia would have to be, you'd basically be off the edge. <laughs> well, I, I have been accused of being off the edge before, so that, uh, that, that's nothing new to me. <laughs> I, you know, as soon as I read that, I was like, uh, when I, when I talked to, um, when I talked to golf, I, I said, I, I gotta, I gotta make sure that, uh, 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 I bring that up. Cause I, that is just, I, that is just too perfect. <laughs> I do like it. It's, it's actually, to be honest with you, Dave, it's not such a, a bad idea. It would make a, a very funny film, you know, uh, Australia being a fake country and we're all just actors just, uh, you know. It would, it would actually, yeah, it would, it would actually make a, a very funny little film. <laughs> well, I, I, re- I really hope you do it uh, because I think it would be hilarious. And then these fake earthers would be like, "Oh my god, we were, we were right!" And you're not, not knowing that you're making a mockumentary. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that they would call it a documentary, I suppose. Absolutely. So if I can, uh, if I can make it uh, good enough, they'll, uh, they'll believe it, and it'll be, it'll be their proof. You know, like. Uh, uh, just like the moon landing was fake, you know, it'll be, uh, it'll be, uh, oh, it'll be proof to them. You can be their their version of Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and be like, and they can, and, and you can say like, listen, I, you know, I have a very uh, a large speaking fee, so if you can pay me, like, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, they they just had their their latest meeting in in uh, in England, so if you say, hey, listen, if you can slip me like ten thousand pounds. Uh, you know, I'll come over and I can I can tell you all the ways that Australia is a fake country. You'd be surprised what I would do for ten thousand uh, pounds. You know, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like well, ten thousand pounds. That is that is actually the the exact price that I, I was gonna uh, I was gonna offer. So uh, <laughs> so they like, yeah, hey, okay. then you can be like, well, all right, I'll I'll, I'll take I'll, since I'm doing this as charity. That's how you have to frame it. You have to frame it like, listen, I'm, so I'm doing this as charity. I'll I'll accept your lowball offer of ten thousand pounds. So. <laughs> well, well, yes, and uh, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it it would it would make so yeah. Like I say, I'd, I'd do a lot of things for ten thousand pounds. I'm happy to uh, talk total nonsense for ten thousand pounds. That's totally cool. <laughs> So, so if you end up doing that, or the, that mockumentary, or, or for any of the flat earthers listen to this, there you go, man. That I'm gonna, I want to put all the, your contact information in the show notes, and they can reach out to you. Be like, hey, come on over. <laughs> well, I suppose uh, I'd have to give you twenty percent, Dave, because it was your idea. So, uh, I suppose that that uh, that means you're on uh, the two two thousand pounds. So, you know, you you're in the coin as well, my friend. Nice, but hey, 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 you know, we we could have a whole system down here now. We can actually turn, we can actually turn this into our own machine of just you know making my, <laughs> like fi- finding like little things on the internet and just like making mockumentaries about them that turn out to be you know in our in their um, eyes it turn out to be true, and we'll just we'll just keep doing it. And, like we're just talking nonsense all day every day for for ten thousand pounds a shot. Well, what what I like to do, just going back to Beer Nuts Productions and the films that I make, what I enjoy doing is grabbing a subject, like I said, you know, the last one being the fitness industry and just tearing it apart. You know, I, I, uh, I really do enjoy that in my writing, you know, just showing the hypocrisy and all of that kind of stuff. You know, I, I really do love grabbing a subject and just ripping it to shreds. I, I find that to be a lot of fun, you know, doing that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, and and, and that's that, that's that's pretty interesting too, uh, golf. Because I think you know that that's why each of your films are different. They have a different kind of tone to each of them, and I, and and that's why I I think you know you're you're kind of gaining traction here, especially you know because you're attacking all the you know, all the all the fun stuff too. Like you know, I think we've all you know I've seen people who want to get into shape and they go overboard and they get a personal trainer and or just you know, they go into the, you know they they go they want to they do the New Year's resolution like I'm going to join a gym. I'll sign up for five the five year plan. <laughs> you know, it's like the the platinum. <laughs> diamond plan that's you know five hundred dollars down and you know five hundred dollars a month yeah well uh, that, that's the thing like one of the sort of underlying messages of the film is you know the sort of fraudulent nature of the fitness industry you know because it is kind of a bit of a fraudulent sort of a business so you know it, it's just a lot of fun to uh, to make fun of uh, of that and the people that are involved in it you know i i do uh, I, and the same like i say i've done uh, you know, I love getting subjects that people are a little bit touchy about, so that's why I sort of go with the pornography I've done and the war on drugs and the environment people are very passionate about. And I like getting subjects that people are really into and passionate about, like the fitness industry, and just ripping it to shreds, you know, and, and picking it apart on both sides, you know, so that, you know, it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on, whether you're left wing or right wing, it doesn't matter. You're both going to cop it. You know, everyone's got to cop their serve equally. I'm, I'm a very fair man in that regard. You know, if you're going to make fun of one thing from one angle, you've got to make fun of it from every angle. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I concur. And, uh, you know, you, always, you always got to have nothing off limits. So you Absolutely, know I mean? man, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Goff, you know, we, we, you know, we've been talking for, you know, about 40 minutes now. Um, so I just want to ask, you know, you know, in conclusion, uh, is there anything you wanted to say to put a period to this whole conversation? Oh, well, just, uh, yeah, just everybody out there listening, just make sure you hit up uh, beernutsproductions.com and uh, download some of my uh, nonsense and hopefully uh, you get some enjoyment out of it. And also, uh, we're all over social media. So Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you're on we're on so just type beer nuts productions into whatever search engine you've got and uh, we'll come up and like follow share and uh, all of that good stuff but mainly obviously uh, download the films and uh, get some enjoyment out of uh, out of what we do because that's at the end of the day that's what uh, beer nuts productions is about that's what i'm about just uh, entertaining folks so hopefully people will uh, jump on board and uh, and love what we do and uh, I'm going to link to all that, everybody, in the show notes at DaveBullis.com. Goff, I want to say thank you so much for coming on, man. No, hey, thanks for your time, Dave. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.